So welcome to another edition of Llama Live. Somebody has said not to call these Llama Live, to call them Llama Barbecues or Barbecue Chat. What? We filmed them live, but yeah, I, fair, fair call. But we don't have any barbecue. Did you have barbecue sauce on your dinner just no, now? We're no. coming back from the Barrel Classic and we thought we'd do a cap, recap of the Barrel Classic ride. <laughs> Whilst it's still a hot topic, whilst we've still got 130 k's in the legs for today and whilst we've still got another five hours drive home, we are five hours into the drive. It's a long way to barrel. Vaughn, how was your day? I had a great day. <laughs> I did, I what? did. I had yeah. 120 k's to yeah. do, had a wheel to sit on, good food stops, um, it was a good ride? The weather was pretty good. It was um, indeed. Yeah, I had a good time. So this year we took it casually, I guess you'd call it. I wasn't finicking over my bike and cleaning every spoke and making sure I was up the front at the start. We were entered in the 160 but rode the 120 and usually we'd be up the front, we'd be like panicking over this and making sure we're race ready and all. This, today we were just cruising and we've done that for I think Amy's last year. Um, we've done that for the Whittlesea Fond or the Whittlesea Challenge and we just have a better day out. We've done the race thing for years and we'll still do the race thing every now and then but these events aren't about the race. You can race them if you want but if you're a serious racer you're down at the NRS or you're racing your local club races. These aren't serious races even though they do have prizes for the first place. But this one is slightly different with the time sections on it as well. Yeah. It's not a, a full time segment. So we have raced these things in the past. There are a few people who do race these, but we were up the back. We got to be part of the event as participants rather than competitors, I guess you'd call it. So but did you have a good day? Early on, um, not really. There was, I mean, there's a lot of riders. There's a lot of riders. Yeah. And the roads aren't closed. We've done uh, a number of fondos where the roads are fully closed. Amy's Grand Fondo is one of them. Uh, this wasn't closed roads, this is open roads. So there's a few slight issues with that, especially with large bunches and trying to move around on when oncoming cars are coming the other way. There's double white lines we have to obey, have to obey. And as racers, for years and years, we've been obeying double whites. If you cross a double white in a race, you're thrown out and you could potentially get your license revoked yeah. or suspended. So you do not cross those lines. The other one I thought was interesting, this course had a lot of out and back. Um, ah, and we had yeah. bunches coming at us. Very fast. Or, yeah, you know, either on descents or stuff coming, um, you know, in the opposite direction. So to cross over the centre line or not pay attention could be very fatal. Yeah. But I have to say, in talking about, you know, uh, risk and reward, um, this is the first mass participation ride I've done where I haven't seen any, personally, I haven't seen any accidents during the event. Yeah. So um, hopefully everyone had a good day out and was stayed safe as well. We've seen a few nasty ones. Uh, Amy's Grand Fondo last year where yeah, somebody smashed their... F anyway, there are incidents that do happen in these. If you're up the front racing, usually you don't see them. Um, but when you're sort of mid-pack, you usually see them. But this was quite safe. But just a, th a few little refinements there, especially the bunch etiquette um, about keeping left. Keeping left. Yeah. I yelled keeping left a lot today. I felt like a bit of a dick saying it all the time. We're saying it polite, we're ringing our bell, but it's just what you have to do. And I mean, uh, the reason being is we were put in situations where we don't want to be in to pass people because it's safer for us to go around rather than sit on someone's wheel. Who, anyhow, keep left, hot topic. Other hot topic out on the road was what head unit were people running? I was looking uh, quite careful, even at the start, we're looking around, looking around, and no surprises, 520, 520, 520, iPhone, 820, 520, uh, I could saw a few element bolts though. So I'm going to run the stats in a couple of days from this event, and we'll run it from last year as well, and we'll have a look at what people were using. Yeah, I was running my 820, what were you running? Element bolts today. Excellent. And we both had navigation on. Because this is yes. the new new roads for us and I've new never elevations, never yeah. been here, never ridden before. So I thought I'd pull down somebody else's. I've copied the event, had the 120k ride up on Ride With GPS. I've pulled that down, synced that to mine. I've sent Vaughn the link and let her sort it out for the for the uh, Garmin. Yes, I was fine with that. So we had queues, we had turn by turn queues. Um, Vaughn, how did your navigation go? Um, mine was flawless. So we rode to the start and then initiated the ride or the course in my case from there 
Um, it told me everything I needed to know well in advance, had nice colored maps. Um, the one thing I didn't know that you um, alerted to me was around the elevation. That once the, you have a course loaded, profile. the yep. profile elevation will tell you what's coming up. Because yep. if you're just riding along in your, you know, out on the road, yeah. it will only show you the gradient where you've been. Where you've been, yeah, the history. Because so, I, I have used courses before, but never really flicked through the screens. So sure. it, it's on a whole different screen in the Garmin yep. to show me what the elevation was. So I was really happy with it. And when I finished, it gave me fan, a fantastic fanfare uh, that I'd completed the course uh, after I I'd finished that. at the, the, the end. At the, um, I don't recall seeing that on mine anyway. I was pretty happy. Okay, so it worked fine. So yeah. ride with GPS. Navigation. Yep. It did have to calculate the route for you though on the start line. I saw it running through the 4%, 5%. It took a couple of minutes to do its thing. Not a couple of minutes. I'd say it was about a minute. Okay, yeah. cool. Yep. So on the bolt, wasn't too bad. Uh, by default, it has that uh, preemptive elevation upcoming thing shown, which is pretty cool. And you can zoom in and out really closely on that um, with a couple of buttons. Vaughn, to zoom in and out on hers, even for the turn by turn stuff, I can zoom in and zoom out really quickly and see what's going on. So if I'm coming up to a technical section, I can zoom in, or if it's a long open road section, I can zoom out really easily with the buttons on the right. Yeah, I was touching the screen when the touch screen wanted to work on the uh -huh. 820, uh -huh. and then um, zooming in and out. What it did have over the bolt, I would say, is that ability to manipulate the map a bit more. Move so around, move yeah. to hand mode and then just drag to wherever I want to see. So as enough. you can tell, we've had a bit of a head unit war today about yeah. what's yours doing? What's yours doing? What's yours say? What's yours say? Mine was pretty good. Show me yours. Show you mine. <laughs> so we're, we're doing a bit of that today just to get out on the road and use it. But I did like the upcoming maps, or the upcoming turns, the upcoming elevation. I knew what was steep and what was not steep. Speaking of steep, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. We um, had seen the profile before we started. Rough, rough profile. Yes, and so we knew that there was a hill at the start and a hill at the end, but um, I wasn't quite prepared for how pinchy those little hills were. The rest of the course was nice and flowing and I really enjoyed it. There were two hills out on course, one at about 12k in or 15k's in, and then one right at the end. Let's talk about the first one. Yeah. I've got some footage of that. <laughs> now, we knew what was, well, we didn't know what was coming up. Really, we knew it was an ele the elevation was pinching up, but when yeah. we had somebody on the side of the road throwing their breakfast up in the first couple of hundred meters of it, we knew it was going to be a bit of a pincher. And then uh, uh, another mate had uh, an issue with a cleat. We would come past this guy; he couldn't clip in with his foot, but it was so steep you can't not clip. It was he got clipped in and off he went, which was good. That was nasty. A lot of people walking that hill early on. Now for the racers and the competitive cyclists suck it up whatever throw you know we don't care i don't like i've done that i've been thrown in races that have been pinchy and hard and that's it but for the yeah. for the everyone ride that's not a good thing you want to have a good day out Von, you want to have a good day out that's right but like the the concept of a race course mm, yeah the, where they pull that together the idea is to whittle it down to be the best final finisher yep. of the day yep. where is something like a participation mass participation event yep a classic what this was yep. um yeah you want to have some features in it absolutely but it shouldn't be a, sh <laughs> a shit show <laughs> a showstopper or okay uh showstopper end of day kind of that was um, end of days for yeah, a lot of people early yeah. on so the mental side of things as well on that seeing people walk up that early they're thinking you know well, what the hell's coming up down the road yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was a nice day out for the rest of the road it was yeah, I, I have to say, this is the first time that I've attended a Grand Fondo and they had a coffee uh, stop at a feed zone. Yeah. So 45 k's in, um, I pulled into the feed zone. Everyone was stopping for the water, but I literally rode my bike up into the coffee line. That's how committed I was to the coffee, uh, to make sure that my Sherpa Shane... Um, two thanks, <laughs> two shots. Just make it strong. Double shot. That was really good. So Von and I split the day up into two halves. Well, there's no other halves, is there, other than two? Yeah. Uh, so the first half an hour or so, we filtered our way through the bunches and got some nice open road, clean air, and found some riders at about the same pace. And then we sort of, the long drags, we put the hammer down. Vaughn's pace up the hills, my pace on the flats where Vaughn could hold the wheel. We had a heap of fun and a good yeah. training day. So we weren't out there for a 120k smash fest. We can go any road, anywhere to do that. 
But we did get a good training day in for the first, you know, what, 45 Ks, 90 minutes or so for the coffee stop. And then we switched it down a couple of gears and just cruised for the most of it. We went hard in a few other little parts and really enjoyed it. There was a woman on a trike who thought we were a yeah. car coming past on one of the downhills. We had a chat to her, said g'day. Went through the town that I can't, it's on the map, I don't know what the town was called. You recall what the town was called? It wasn't Mossvale. No, that's where we stayed. It was a nice little country town. The, the timing was off and on throughout the town as well. Because again, it wasn't closed road and it wasn't a race. But so There's yeah, some that, time segments on it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but no, and then the second half of the ride, we just ticked it in and then the rest was survival up another really so aerodrome climb, I think it was. Yeah, so it, um, they had closed the road off for that section because it was quite steep. Um, and the date warmed up by that time, so I only did to stop and take off a few layers. <laughs> Thank goodness I did. Um, and yeah, the steep climb just pulled up out of nowhere and finished right on top of the hill and had a fantastic view from the top. It was nice. If you could look around. Um, there's a few people looking at their head tubes, I think, at that point, <laughs> and out the side of the road as yeah. they were delivering the mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delivering the mail, I like it. Uh, we also did a few Ks with uh, Jason. We met Jason today who watches the channel. It's good to have a chat to Jason about his uh, ride. He was doing the 160K. Yeah. Committed. So good to see, good to spend some time with yeah. uh, somebody who knew Von and I. Yeah, I hope you get that um, smart trainer for Christmas, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone needs a smart trainer for Christmas. <laughs> So back onto the head units again, I had live tracking on for the day, so I've tweeted out a link so people could follow us for the last 40k home or so. So that was cool to be able to share that out. Usually I'd share it to Vaughn, but she was with me. So the internet became my watcher, I guess. Yeah. And some people followed along that, which was pretty cool. On that map that I had on my screen, I could see other riders using live track as well, because you can share your location to other element users. Yeah. That was cool. Even though we're out on the road with 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 other riders, there was one or two or three other rider names popping up on my screen. I was trying to pick where they were and who they were. Well, um, you knew who they were. Well, their names, they only had their nicknames. So I think it would come up with Llama or something on mine or Shane M or something like that. But, but who, who did we see on there? Scott uh, C? Was Scott, that? Scott C. Never got to catch up with Scott C. And there was somebody yeah. else floating around, but they kind of disappeared and popped on and popped off. And they, I think it was lagged by about, it depends on their 3G network or 4G oh, network yeah. or LTE on the phones. So I think it was lagged a few seconds and that makes all the difference. If you're coming around a corner and expect to see somebody, if they're 17 seconds different, you're not going to be able to yell out their name and say g'day. But it was cool to see. I mean, that, that live track technology on my head unit from others feeding into the cloud, and that's kind of cool. I like it. Yeah, because I know that Garmin have their live tracking as well, but I don't think that you can see other riders I on that. I don't think it's social like that. So okay. interesting stuff, but I'll look into the Strava stats and we'll, uh, yeah, I'll do that video in a few days. I'm keen to see how the Element Bolt has gone. The event was sponsored by Wahoo, okay. or was it partnered by Wahoo. So we shall see if the rise of the Bolt is happening in Barrel. <laughs> Back in our hometowns here in Australia. Cool. Uh, so Barrel does have their very own velodrome. It was a very uh, European kind of finish. Yeah. I think the actual timing chips were out the road and the official finish banner was, you know, across the, um, before we entered the velodrome. Yeah. So we got to, even though you'd sort of done for the day, your timing chip was done, we got to have a bit of a roll around. And uh, yeah, I, I like that. Again, for the serious races, they'll be like, oh yeah, whatever, yeah, you just oh, going. Oh, what a hassle, yeah, yeah. 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 Where's my it's recovery not a sprint drink? Finish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's my protein drink? Yeah. Oh. But yeah. actually, we had. Uh, yeah, we can't. Yeah, we're taking the piss out of ourselves here. <laughs> <laughs> How we used to be. <laughs> well, I still was. You had one. <laughs> anyway, but it was cool. I liked that. I liked that bit of a novelty finish at the end there. I and mean, you just start thinking of like all I could think of was you know stay high, Heyman, stay high, and then dive down. <laughs> but Von got me for that one. And uh, nice event village. There was beers at the end. Von got herself a beer. Yeah, fantastic. And a petting zoo. You're random, but I loved it. We were like, why is there an animal petting zoo here? I couldn't make any sense of it. There's families there with their 
other halves finishing. Yeah. Husbands, wives, partners, all finishing. And the kids were running around petting the little Zeus. So I've walked up and I'm like, oh, I want to pat the llama. Thinking, you know, just taking the piece that there was a llama on it. There was a llama. There There was was actually a a llama. llama. It wasn't an alpaca. It was a real llama. Yeah. We checked it out. We patted it. Yep. For both of us. It wouldn't stand up. It was a lazy llama. But I'd probably done the 160. (laughs) 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 It kicked ass in the hills. (laughs) So... But you think, oh yeah, llamas, I was in my element. No, no. There was something that trumped the llamas. Well, I spotted them first. I was pretty excited. They had baby piglets. They were one week old. Amazing, cute little they were about nuggets. This big, little piggies. They had, they were, they were well off topic of cycling, but yeah. this was fantastic. I've never played with little baby pigs. We've had pigs, so what, Years back, we like Dad used to go feed the pigs out. Yeah, anyway. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Years ago, but they were big old pigs, and just they just did nothing. Not that I. Anyhow, these were baby pigs. They were shiny little clean pigs. White. And you could just Pink. they wanted to nose butt you. I think they were looking for food. Well, but... <laughs> the tables were turned. The bacon was eating me. Right. So they were biting my hand. These little piggies, but they were. They would have only been about two or three kilos each. Not that you could pick them up, but, you know, just judging on them. But they had push power with their little noses. Yeah, they kept them budding our hands. It was hilarious. So anyhow, we had Very fun cute. playing with the little pigs. That was just left field. We just done a big ride. We are a bit delirious. We were hungry. Then when we had, we had some uh, pulled pork rolls for lunch and some chips. <laughs> so the pigs ate us. We ate them. Karma restored. We're good. Anyway, good day out. Um, and... We're up there as guests of Tula, Tuli, Thul, however you want to say it. Um, They're sponsors of both of ours. And we rode in our kit. Uh, We had a chat to the team up there. It was good to see them out. They were a sponsor of the event as well. So heaps of fun. Good day out. Lovely work. So we thought we'd share a couple of quick tips for fondos, especially this one because it's still fresh, even though the sun is setting on today and that's it. We might do another entire video on just like top 10 fondo tips or something like that. But we'll just cover a few tips that we saw from today that will help anybody who's going to do a ride specifically like this one over this distance and who's part of the average, not the racer up the front. You guys take care of yourself. You know what it's all about. And the introductory level cyclist, you know, the, the, we'll look at, you know, what does it take? What, what's the best thing you can do to prepare yourself to be average? Because today, I think we were pretty average on the bike. We were mid-pack. Yeah, just to finish it for the day. We were finishers, not yeah. really competitors, I guess you'd say. So, Vaughn, how are we going for tips? What's our first um, one? I think one of the first ones is one of the keywords that you just touched on there. Yep. Preparation. Yep. So, understanding um, what the course is, understanding... Um, what kind of bike that you need to ride for this kind of you know distance that you're going to do? So there were family fondos. So you could do pull your mountain bike out and ride with your mates on that. Yep. Or if you're going to do the 160, don't recommend you do it on the mountain bike. Yep. Nope. So those kind of things around preparation. So have your yourself prepared for the distance or your bike prepared for the distance? Okay. So preparation. So both yourself over the distance, your equipment. Now, Von, your gear change cable. How was that today? It was amazing. There we go. So, so Von's bike, if you saw the other video, uh, Von's gear cable the other day was frayed. And if we hadn't ridden that today and snapped that and she was stuck in the big dog, that would have been all bad. Or even the small dog for the descents. Small ring, little, little ring on the front. So I think it's about knowing the distance and knowing what it takes to be average. I'll do a video on the statistics, what it takes to be average as a finisher for the 120 and the 160, so you'll know what it's about. You need to be going out and doing rides similar to that as preparation. If today was a first road ride from anybody and they tackled that hill at 12 k's in and they hadn't ridden 50 k's or 80 k's or 90 k's before, bad day out, bad day out. Yeah, I I think I saw a guy that had uh, experienced that there. Yeah, bad day out. So you need to be prepared for these. And they're like one, uh, four hours in the saddle, five, six hours in the saddle is a long day. It's a long day. You need to practice for that. Um, another one I'd say is open roads versus closed roads. Chalk and cheese of how they're ridden. It's that whole, you've got to obey the road rules. Keep left, keep left, and realize that people will be coming from behind, coming past. Don't ride the white line in the center. Um, and there's cars. Yeah, so there's always support vehicles for these events. 
um, regardless. So you need to leave enough room so that if they need to rip past to help someone else out that's had some difficulty, that yep. they can be there for those people as well. Yep, so preparation of yourself, your bike, your nutrition, food, eat lots. Now I'll cover this quickly because we're probably sitting here talking to you in the dark. Food-wise, the way I tackle everything that's of endurance, two hours plus, first hour, I'm already carved up. I've already got the fuel in the tank and the bottles filled for the first hour. I've already had a drink. I don't even really need to sip a lot unless it's a hot day, but first hour, don't eat anything. Well, I usually don't. And then at the hour mark, down a gel, or it depends on how hard it's going, or some food, and then half hour increments from there. So use those reserves, and then every half hour, eat, eat, eat. I think we grabbed a handful of bars at the, well, I had a cliff bar at the hour mark, and then from there, half hour in, fine, all day. And the difference that actually makes, as an example, we went for a walk around Lake Wendere the other night, <laughs> which was just, it's a 6K walk. <laughs> So this was a four and a half hour event for us today, just under four and a half hours for yep. the 120. I was fine all day, could have kept going all day, and at the end, like we're just ripping into it fine because that nutrition was kept up, all the carbs were kept up, the fuel sources were there, the, the drinks were there, the coffee was good. Back to my walk around the lake the other night, I got three Ks in and was seeing stars. The reason being is we took off, we started the walk at dinner time, but didn't have any food. And there was no food on course, so to speak. Horrible time. That walk home, the three kilometer walk home without food the other night was harder than finishing today's ride. True. So nutrition, big one. Practice that as well on weekends before yeah. tackling something like this. Okay, I think we're almost sitting here in the dark. So with the magic of the internet, lights. <laughs> okay, not not mine, not mine. Okay. That's alright. Okay, cool. I'll so, be I'll be just right. sort of I'll be shouting comments from the from the sidelines here. Alright. I don't know if you can see us, so we're just gonna go with this guys. We'll go with the flow. Go with the flow. And the traffic here. I can yep, we're still good. Alright. Yep. More tips. We've tips. only got a couple more. Um study the course. So uh, if you've got a long event, the Barrel Classic in comparison to Amy's Vondo very different types of courses. Yep. There were much longer climbs in Amy's Fondo. Um, so knowing that you're going to be spending 16 minutes or half an hour climbing. Yeah, versus, versus five minutes, yeah. Yep, yep. Versus the small little pinches that we did today. Yep. We were very different. We're good. They were very different. So um, have, a, have, a, have that in mind when you're doing those things around preparation and that. Another one I'll throw is know the elements. Now I'm not talking about my head unit and how to operate it. Uh, know what's, if it's going to be cold or if it's going to be hot. Dress appropriately, yeah. When it's yep. hot you can take clothes off. When it's cold you need to be carrying the clothes to put them on. So be prepared for that. There is, you'll, have a horrible, horrible, you'll have a horrible experience if you're riding in the cold and can't get more clothes on or get warm again. Yeah. So be prepared for that. We were pretty safe up in um, mid New South Wales. Ooh, we've got a moth who's joined us That's for right. the last few tips. Um, another tip is around bunch riding. So if you're um, going to be doing a mass participation event, there's going to be a lot of riders around you. So get used to riding with other people. Yep. Um, Breaking distances. Yep. yep. Holding a good line. Yep. Point Good etiquette, so pointing out potholes, there, um, there, keeping left. There, yep. There, there, there. <laughs> I we're think we found all the potholes. We're, we're right driving now. over the potholes now. <laughs> so, this general bunch ride etiquette, and if you haven't ridden in a bunch before and you're not confident with that, just drop back and stay to the left. Or if you're in America, I guess you'd stay to the right. Yeah, um, edge of the road. But it's just, just it's again, it comes back to the safety of others around you as well. Yeah. Um, I guess again around etiquette is make sure you, that you thank the volunteers on the side of the road, those that are cornering. There was doing a the corner there was a lot out there today. So you've, have you got sunglasses on at night, Von? Sure do. That's so Blues Brothers right now. That moth <laughs> is everywhere. So yeah, so you're out there. Cycling is a very selfish sport. People are out there spending hours riding themselves, enjoying it themselves. It's all for yourself. That fitness that you gain is all yours. The time that you spend is all yours. And there is a number of other people who are spending their time allowing you to have that experience. 
to the volunteers who stand out there. It wasn't a closed road, but there were traffic marshals to ensure our safety was good. So we made sure we said good day, said hello, thanked them. Um, they were all very happy. And I guess it helps their day go a bit quicker as well if people are talking to them back. Yeah. So that's and all good. If you keep these things as guidelines, I guess, for, for doing these kind of events, try and enjoy it too. <laughs> so by doing these things, it will help you enjoy and have a better experience and better time out there. Yep, absolutely. So we wrap up Vine, good event? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I did too. The second half was brilliant. Well, the first half was, as I said, a little hectic. And we got a good training day out of it, just you know, diving our way through the bunches and getting some clear air there. And the second half was just some good scenery. We didn't do the 160. We heard the extra 40k loop was even more picturesque, oh. maybe even more hillier. Oh. But they can keep that because we had fun. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think I would have been having fun at the end there. So again, know your limits. Yeah. Know your limits. Yeah, um, I think we made the right call on the day. Yeah, given the amount of Ks that we've done just coming out of winter and just moving house, moving boxes and all at work, <laughs> we the, we just chose the 120 and had a good day out. Distance-wise, probably a bit too far from home. It's eight hours, nine hours, ten hours in the car each direction, and that's what we're yeah. talking to you in the car now for, killing some time here. So I'd recommend, definitely recommend people do these events. Yeah. Um, you don't Again, you don't have to race them. Just be average because that's what we all are. And enjoy it. And enjoy it, but pick one closer to home um, and make a good weekend of it. Like go and get it. We had a really great Airbnb that we stayed at. Nice little place. Fantastic. All right, we'll leave it there. We've got another three and a half hours to go. Sun setting. Thanks for joining us on a darkened version of yeah. Llama Barbecue, Llama Live. Night, night live. Night. Llama live night. Late nights late with night, Llama. Late, up late with Llama. And this is Lama Night Live. <laughs> we'll come up with a name. Either way, we really appreciate everybody viewing, listening along, and uh, all your contributions as well are always welcome down below in the comments. So if you've got some tips for some fondos, if you were part of it, and with the stats video that I'll do, I'll do the Strava Insights video for the Barrel Classic this year, watch out for a giveaway. I'll give away a head unit. Really? I think I'll give away a head unit. No, I know I will. Okay. If you're an iPhone user who has done the ride, keep an eye on my video upload, coming up. Upload. Upload your data. Because you'll be chosen from a random pool of randoms and we'll give you a head unit. More on that in that video. Okay, we'll leave it there. We've got more truck stop food coming up. Woo! Nutrition out the window. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see everybody soon. And Vaughn, thanks for coming for the ride. <laughs> thanks for driving. I was driving all day.